this is pretty bad conditions because I know if when I walk around gathering material I'm gonna get soaked I'm gonna put a long fire out in front but the first thing what I've got to do is I've got to make myself a brush bed I'm gonna walk around and get spruce and fir branches and I'm gonna create a bed back here after I dig out some of this snow as you can see I've been breaking off some of these branches here this is off of balsam fir and my bed I'm gonna bring it back a little ways right across here and I'm just gonna start piling these across here to make my mattress now these smaller ones you can actually add them to the top and you can use the bigger brush and uh, put them on the bottom because what this is doing is it's keeping you off the ground off of the snow because the snow and the ground will suck your body heat right from you so what you have to do is you gotta put enough boughs on here that's gonna raise you up off the conduction of the ground the cold so what you want to do is put at least a foot of compressed boughs across here and that there will keep you nice and warm during the night and the ground will not affect you the thing is is that if you start feeling you're a little cold after you have a foot uh, sit some get by with six inches compressed other people a foot it's uh, cording on yourself if you're still cold put more boughs on that's what you do so I'm gonna build a bed right across here of all boughs and just keep piling them up laying on it compressing them and keep going and keep going until my bed is full now this takes time to do and you want to get as much snow off of this as possible and I'm not quite done with this but pretty much I'll show you how it's gonna work yeah I can put more on this part to act as a pillow I can put a bunch more here and that feels pretty good right like that but I'll play around with it a little bit and such but that's my bed I'll come back and show you how to set up the tarp I'm gonna go from this height right here my waist kind of deal, my hip, whatever. I'll bring it over, do the same thing on this side. Now what I have to do is take this out. This does not have any grommets in it. So you break this out. This uh, is pretty, it's not real tough but it will work as a shelter if need be but it's also a double emergency blanket that you can just wrap around yourself I'm going to show you how to use this without grommets and other types of survival blankets I just cut this up it's a little piece of wood and what I have done is taken off the sharp edges now what you do is put that in underneath here and gather it around that corner like this so it's in underneath there give it a couple twists now I have this into a slip knot you put that in underneath and tighten it up now that cannot come out unless it pulls over top of this which it can't so the only way that that can come off is if it rips the tarp this is a very strong way to put tie outs on a tarp what I want to do is I'll just tie this over to the tree over here bring it around tie it off it's that simple now I've got to put two more tie out points in the back here and then stake that down that's the constructed shelter right there I can lay in here now what I'm going to do is build a long fire out front here. That's going to allow for all the heat to come up and reflect off of here and down onto me. Shouldn't take too long to start heating that up in there. 
you can see right now, it's minus 10 Celsius right now. And this is the outside temperature. I'm going to set this inside the shelter and we'll see the difference. I just wanted to show you the efficiency of this type of shelter. This is minus 10 Celsius. It's supposed to get down to minus 14 tonight with a wind chill of minus 24. And this throws off a tremendous amount of heat, like I said. So this here is going to be a great shelter for me tonight. It was pretty cool. It got down to minus 18 last night. And this here is definitely fire dependent. You let your fire go down, you're getting cold. So you have to keep your fire going and you have to make sure that you have enough firewood for the night. Now another reason I put this right here is because it's fairly open up there. I can see right up through there. This is orange on the other side. This here, if a plane is searching for me, this is somewhat open in this area they're going to fly by and see this orange shelter. That's also very important to try to get into a spot that is somewhat open if you can so you can be rescued. I'm actually going to use this uh, tree that's already in here and what I'm going to do is make a tripod on both sides of this shelter that you can close in on both sides. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut these to size and then we're going to start putting the tripod together and I'll show you how to lash one. You can see got two short and one long. And you can put the long in between. I don't think it really matters if you put it in between or on the outside. Now we're going to want this back one here to go back. It's got to go back here somewhere. So what we need is one to go out to the side and one to go out to the front to get our tripod. Like that. That's going to be perfect. Now what I have to do here is get this right around the same height as the other side and I'm just going to tie this to it. So tie this here to this side and then bring it over and tie it to that side and then down through. And I'll just tie it around here. Same granny knot again. And then I can bring this bottom part and I can tie it down this area down here and on the same thing over here. So I'm going to tie this on here and then I'll show you where we go from there. Now that I've got this tied here, one down there, I've got to tie that other corner still, but you can see. This wants to fall inward. So now that I've got that stretched out across here, I know the length of the pole. I've got a cut, and I'll set a pole right across here to here. And what that's going to do is that's going to stop that from trying to come in. I'm going to tie that pole in between the two tripods. And that will stop that wanting to fall inward. That will give us structure and strength that we can start piling sticks and brush or debris on the outside to close in our walls. So this is what you want to do. You want to just keep stacking sticks in through. But that's going to allow that you can take brush and lean up against here and fill this all in with brush so the wind will not blow through. If you get that thick enough and you can't see out through, it will shed most of the rain as well. It will not come in through. 
But this is, goes up this way and it wraps around. That's a really good feature to keep the wind blowing this way out and such as well. Now, if you are in an area that does not have brush, then you fill this in even more. So this, uh, just keep stacking sticks and you can throw leaves on top or other debris as well to block out the uh, wind and even most of the rain. Put your bush bed in here and that's going to trap the heat and keep the wind from blowing in and driving it away from you. As well as the rain is going to hit that and it's going to deflect a lot of rain if it's blowing in on an end like that. So this here is the advanced type of reflective tarp shelter and it takes a lot more time to construct but it has its advantages.